What's up, mathematicians? Today we're talking about simplifying fractions. And what does it even mean to simplify fractions? Well, basically, it means to turn a fraction into its simplest form. The fraction still equals the same amount, it's just in a simpler form. Uh, and the reason that we do that is because when we're working with larger fractions, or sorry, I should say larger numbers in fractions, it's easier to read a fraction and understand what it represents and compare it to other numbers or mixed numbers or other fractions if it's in its simplest form. It's also a lot easier when you're working with um, longer uh, operations or, and equations. It's easier to work with a fraction when it's in, in its simplest form when, uh, when, when that's the case, when you have a really long operation to work with. So I'll give you an example. Here we have the fractions 11 44ths and 12 48ths. Well, I'm going to actually turn each of these fractions into their simplest form to give you a sense of why it might be easier to compare these two fractions when they are in their simplest form. So let's start with 11 44ths. So the first step in simplifying a fraction is to find what we call the greatest common factor. Greatest common factor. Now another um, term for this is the highest common factor. And sometimes these are abbreviated the GCF for greatest common factor or the HCF for highest common factor. And they mean the same thing. It doesn't really matter. Um, and here, let's, let's remember here, what do we mean by factor? Well, a factor is a number that when you multiply it by another number, another whole number. Let me, let me rephrase that. A factor here is a whole number that when you multiply it by another whole number equals another whole number. So three times four equals 12. And so three and four are factors of 12. Let's do another example. Um, what are the factors of four? Well, we think about every number that can go into four when they are multiplied together. Well, the cool thing is that with any whole number, one, and the number itself are always going to be factors because any number times itself is itself. So if you have three, then one times three equals three, which makes one and three both factors. If you have the number 201, then one times 201 equals 201, which means 201 and one are factors. Now there could be other factors so for the number 12, we know that 3 and 4 equal 12, so 3 and 4 are factors. But we also know that, of course, 1 times 12 equals 12, so 1 and 12 are also factors. And then we also know that 2 times 6 equals 12, so 2 and 6 are also factors. One thing to note is that if a factor is an even number, like four, like 12, then it's always going to have a factor that is two. Even two has a factor of two because one times two is two. Okay, so now we've reviewed what a factor is. Let's go over the factors of 11 to reduce 11 44ths to its simplest form. Well, I know, now one is, I mean, sorry, 11 is an odd number. So I'm thinking definitely one and 11, obviously, because one times 11 is 11. But I can't think of anything else that 11 can be divided by, any other whole number that 11 can be divided by. What about 44? What can 44 be divided by? What whole numbers? Well, one and 44, because you're always gonna have one times the number itself. But I also know that four times 11 
equals 44. And I also know that this is an even number, so it would be 2 times 22. And I, th I, think, I think I've got them all. I think I've got them all. Um, so now I am going to look at the groups of factors here. And I am going to circle the ones that are the same for the numerator and for the denominator. Remember, numerator is upstairs, denominator is downstairs. And one way to remember is remember that is that the word numerator has the letter U in it, which stands for upstairs, and the word denominator has the letter D in it, which stands for downstairs. That's the trick that I tell students to use to help them remember. Anyway, let's circle our common factors. So one and one are the same, that's a common factor. And I see 11 and 11 are the same, and there are no more factors for, for 11. So the greatest, the largest, the highest common factor is 11. And what does that mean? That means that both the numerator and the denominator can be divided by 11. So let's do it. Let me go down here. So we had 11 44ths. We identified the greatest common factor as 11. So I'm going to divide both the numerator and the denominator by 11. 11 divided by 11 is 1. 44 divided by 11 is 4 because 4 times 11 is 44. So that fraction in its simplest form is 1 fourth. Now we're going to go back up and look at 12 48ths. We want to get a sense of what these numbers represent and by simplifying them, it allows us to understand the number better, putting this in a different color, 12 48ths. So let's do the same process. We're going to find the factors of 12 and find the factors of 48. Well, I'm thinking 1 in 12 and then 1 in 48 for the denominator. But I know more numbers... I know 12 can be divided by more numbers, so I know 3 times 4 equals 12, and I know 2 times 6 equals 12. And then here for 48, let me think, I know um, 4 times 12 equals 48. It's an even number, so I know 2 times 24 equals 48. And as I'm looking at all the factors, I can already see that the highest common factor, the greatest common factor is going to be 12 because the highest common factor for 12 is 12 and, the high, and then 12 is here too. We know it can't be anything higher than 12 because the highest number in our numerator, in our list of factors for the numerator is 12. So now we do the same thing. We take 12 48ths and we divide it by the greatest common factor so divide by 12, divide by 12, and what do we get? Well, we get 12 divided by 12 equals 1, 48 divided by 12 equals 4. What do you know? 12 48ths and 11 44ths are the same thing. They are both equal to one fourth. And my friends, that is how you simplify a fraction. And let's do a couple more just for examples. Let's do, how about, let's do, hmm, let's do 1624 Okay, going to write out my factors. One. 16, 2, 8, 4. And I can just write 4 once, even though 4 times 4 is 16. I just need to write it once. I think I've got them all there. I think I've got them all there. Now let's go to the denominator. Okay, it's going to be 1 and 24, and then 2 and 12, then 4 and 6, and then is that it? Oh, I forgot 3 and 8. Okay, 
Now let's look at the common factors and see if we can find the highest common factor, the greatest common factor. I see that it's eight. I see that it's eight. Now I'm gonna divide the numerator and the denominator by the greatest common factor. What do I get? Two thirds. So 16 twenty fourths in its simplest form is two thirds. All right, let's do one more. And let's do, you can also do this by the way with improper fractions. So here I have 49 twenty eighths. It's an improper fraction because the numerator is greater than the denominator. Now, let me write out my factors. Okay, for 49, it's gonna be one and 49, and then I know it's seven times seven. For 28, it's one and 28, and then I know four times seven equals 28, and then it's an even number, so I know it'll be divided, it can be divided uh, by two, and it'll be two times 14. And now I'm gonna look at my factors. I see seven is in a factor for both, both the numerator and the denominator. And so now I'm gonna do my division, divide by seven, divide by seven. 49 divided by seven is seven. 28 divided by seven is four. So this fraction in its simplest form is 7 fourths, and if you want to turn it to a mixed number, you can because 7 fourths also equals 1 and 3 fourths. Don't worry about converting it to a mixed number if you don't know how to do that yet. And that is all, mathematicians. I hope you found this helpful. Until next time.